Hello, it's nice to meet you. This is what I would be sharing with my students on the very first class meeting day. So um, I hope you pay attention to this. There's going to be a, a quiz over the material in your syllabus, so it's really important that you understand it. Not everybody passes that. So let's look at this. This is what uh, the first page of the syllabus looks like. All of this information is available on Canvas 24-7. That means that Canvas is always available to you and your syllabus is always there. A students generally print it out and keep it handy. Just saying. I have four sections of 100 students each and I have four TAs. Each section has its own TA. So you need to know what your section is. Also, if you print this out, there's a space right underneath this for you to write down your TA's email so that you know how to get in touch with them. And also, you should make a note of what section you're in. A lot of students have no idea when I ask them. So um, underneath that is my contact information, and I have circled PhD, and this is just a simple thing. It's very annoying when I get an email that says, um, uh, hey, or hey, Nancy, or whatever. It's like, it's very disrespectful. So you should never address your teachers by first name unless they give you permission, unless they ask you to. So um, hot tip is down at the bottom in green. It says, if you're unsure of how to address your teacher, professor is always a safe choice. If you really want to be on top and show your professor how smart you are, check the syllabus. If the letters PhD or EDD or any kind of D appears after their name, call them doctor. That means that they have gone to school many years and worked very hard to be addressed as a doctor. Um, I don't think I'll be showing up in my office unless you really need to talk to me in person and then you will have to come masked and that will all be arranged. But there's my office location. Phone number TBA. This is a very confusing issue. Um, I will give you that contact information, but I'm not sure which phone number at this point um, I will be using. So uh, just hold on. It's coming. Now, here's important. Use only UNCC email to communicate with me. And there is my email address. I'm going to say this several times throughout this slideshow, so uh, just get used to the overkill. Also, when you do, um, make sure you are using your UNCC email and not some private email. When you sign into my UNC Charlotte, go to Canvas. So this shows the home page or an old home page of UNC Charlotte. It says, uh, My UNC Charlotte. You click on that. It takes you to a Niner Net login. You click on that. Then you have to log in with your name and your password down here. And then after you do that, it will bring you to this page, only it will not say faculty. It will say student. And there's a whole group of icons here, including your uh, campus mail, your Gmail. Um, and this little, I don't know, starburst, whatever, I guess it's a star, is Canvas. So click on that and it will bring you into your Canvas, which is completely different than my Canvas. Your Canvas will have every course that you are in, I assume. And one of the courses will be my course. So um, here's another important important announcement. I use announcements on Canvas to send email messages to all students. They will arrive in your UNC, in UNCC inbox. Do not reply on Canvas. Don't send me an email on Canvas. I only want you to use the uh, Gmail account. But I will send you things from Canvas because there are 400 of you and there is one of me. Uh, so I have 400 students and four LBST sections on Canvas, and I never check Canvas for messages. It is your responsibility to check your email regularly. Not reading the email is not an excuse. If I send it, I assume all students read it. 
Use only UNCC email to communicate with me, mbishop5 at uncc.edu. And by the way, you do not need to send me an email and tell me that you read this or you heard this. Again, I have 400 students. So now I opened up the uh, class site for section 500. And so uh, this image is going to be different if you're not in section 500. So just kind of bear with me. This is 500 only. And um, this is the, one of the very first things I want you to do is when you get into your class, go to preferences uh, or your account here, and then choose notification preferences when you get into your account. And you'll get this uh, list, that, and it's a really, really long list of course activities. You can choose whatever preferences you want, and you can see the green check mark means notify me right away, the little clock means send a daily summary, and this thing that looks like a calendar says send weeks summary, and this says do not send me anything. So I've, I've chosen that with a few um, there, including course content because, you know, I created the course content, so I really don't need notifications on that. Um, so the important one, and I cannot overemphasize this, you must absolutely check announcements and you must put a green check here. And this is because this is an online course and I will never see you in person. So the only way I have to tell you important things is via announcements. And I don't do them indiscriminately. I will use these only for important things. So please trust me, I'm not going to flood your inbox with a bunch of stuff. So please do the green check and then you will get the information. And sometimes there are assignments. I'm notifying you that you might have a day or two days to do something to respond because we're going to have check-ins um, that will take the place of attendance. You will have a very short time to do that. You will answer a question. All the all those instructions will be coming, but this is how it will come into your lap, is via announcements, so please do that. And this is a module, so all of your course information is organized into 20 modules on here, and there's a lot of stuff. I've worked hard all summer, I've reformatted all of the lectures, and I have recorded all of them. I have now have a YouTube channel with all of my lectures on it. So this is the way um, a typical module looks at the very, and I put them in priority order. So at the very top, there are these links to my YouTube lectures that are on the ancient Near East. And I know the, the, um, title is not very engaging, but just sort of, you know, do it anyway. Lecture one of two. And they have different lengths, but this is the Ancient Near East. This is what replaces your in-class lecture. It is super important. And as one of my TAs said in uh, his notice to his students, this really should not be skipped. You cannot get all the information you need out of the notes and the PowerPoints. Please do this. Well, this actually has my PowerPoint. Then um, the A&E, which means Ancient Near East Notes. This has also been redesigned this summer, so they're a little more thorough. I now use complete sentences, or tried to, um, because in the past, the notes that I gave my students were the notes that I use in lecture, and they just sometimes will have bullet points. And uh, no, no real explanation. So they're, they're redone. And that is, you can use those if you're unsure about what I meant or the significance, or maybe you just simply want to go a little deeper, you can read those. And they are um, as important, or I'd say equally important, to the lectures. <clears throat> then you see a group of things here um, that are slightly indented. I did this to indicate to you that these are not requirements, they are not um, that important, they are simply available if somebody wants 
a little bit more. Every module will have a PDF of the original PowerPoint that was included with the textbook. And I said in a few places, I would use these with caution. There's some mistakes in there. There's some misspellings. There's an awful lot of text slides. And they don't necessarily emphasize the big ideas that I want you to get. So that's optional. Alexander enters Babylon. I will also put clips and movies here. That is a movie clip that I really enjoy from an absolutely horrible movie, IMHO. Um, but it shows Alexander the Great entering the ancient Near Eastern city of Babylon. And uh, it's, it shows one of the monuments that we talk about in class. So I wanted it in Hollywood version, Hollywood style. It's a very short clip. Map of the Persian Empire, and this is just, uh, if you want to marvel at how far they spread, you can look at that then. Okay, those are all the optionals. And you get down here and back, uh, these are now flush to the left margin. We have the quiz to review, which tells you everything you really need to know, because there's a lot of information in the lectures and the notes. But what you really need to know, what's going to be required of you on the quiz. So what I recommend to students who have access to a printer is prior to watching these, these uh, videos up here, print out your review and keep it beside you when you're watching the videos so that you can make notes and you can underline things, you can make it really clear to you and then I'm sure your learning will be enhanced. The last thing in every module is the quiz, and these are all on Canvas. They are all true, false, multiple choice. They are timed. You do not have a lot of time, and that is because um, I'm quizzing you on what has stuck in your brain, not what you're able to look up. So this is why you should print out the review, take your notes up here, and then you can keep your review right next to you when you take the quiz. You have usually, most of them have eight minutes to take to answer 10 questions. And when students complain that that's not enough time, then I just think you didn't know the answer. So that, that was <laughs> pretty obvious. Please do not complain to your TAs that there's not enough time. Um, and now we're going to move on. From the syllabus, all communication will be via the UNCC email. Check it at least once a day. Make sure you have read the syllabus. If you cannot find the information you need and believe the only way forward is to email me, please make sure your correspondence has your full name and your section number. And it will save time because I send back many emails just immediately reply saying what section are you in and just give me that right up front and I can help. I will check emails on weekdays during work hours 9 to 5 and will respond soon. I may check in the evening or on weekends but I'm not required to do so. You may also contact the TA for your section. It is also good to network with fellow students as they may have the information you seek. History has shown that it answers to at least 50% of student questions can be found in the syllabus. <clears throat> Here's another helpful note at the bottom. If the information you seek is in the syllabus, I may simply send a copy back to you and make a mental note about laziness. Don't let that happen to you. Here's the grading scheme. This is where students always start to pay a lot of attention. So, um, there are 20 equally weighted quizzes on Canvas, and they weigh 70%. That is the bulk of your grade. The two lowest quizzes will be dropped for your final grade. So that means you have two opportunities where you're not going to fail horribly if you forget to take a quiz, but only two. Um, and it won't happen until the very end, and suddenly you'll get a little bump in your grade. Okay? 
Um, also, at this point, I should say most students who fail, and believe it or not, students do fail, is because they forget to take the quizzes. They just let those deadlines slip past them. They're not tuned in because it's all on you. I'm not going to send you a reminder that you have a quiz, so you need to know that. There are 20 quizzes. Discussions, 15%. So express your opinions in writing on Canvas. The prompts will be posted. There are um, several where they will be graded. Um, and you will get plenty of information in advance of those. Please do not over-anticipate these. Attendance, 15% will be on responding to check-in prompts. And this is because we don't have a class to attend, but I want to make sure that you are with me all through the semester, and this will be via these um, check-ins. And this is why you need to have those announcements sent to you, because all the check-ins are going to come to you in that form as an announcement. I might ask you a question about um, the art that, that we covered that particular week. Okay, so that totals 100%. Final examination, what? There will be no makeup quizzes, so if you have a zero, you just have to let it go. Students may choose to take the optional final exam for a grade bump. If the grade on the optional final is better than your third lowest quiz grade, it can be used to replace it, will be used to replace it. Uh, so I said third lowest because, of course, your two lowest are going to be gone. They'll be erased. And your third lowest can also be erased if you take the optional final. And more about that will come later. It's also on Canvas. Um, and I've also had questions. We'll go over this at the time. But if you choose to take the optional final and you do poorly on it, it cannot hurt you. So I will only use that grade if it is better than your third lowest. All right? Your virtual attendance will be gauged by your check-in responses, so keep on top of that. Should you miss more than 20% of the check-ins, you will fail the class. If you miss a check-in or quiz because of serious illness or other emergency, let me, Dr. Bishop, know. In the case of severe personal problems, such as a death in the family, uh, or contracting COVID-19, please contact me. The Dean of Students Office can also help with extreme situations. And I know it's not pleasant, but every semester some students have extreme situations. Class accommodations. UNC Charlotte is committed to access to education. If you have a disability and need academic accommodations, please provide a letter of accommodation from Disability Services early in the semester. For more information on accommodations, contact the Office of Disability Services at 704-687-0040 or visit their office in Fretwell 230. They, they do have people in their office, the last I heard, but not a full staff. Uh, likewise, if you require accommodation based on your religious practices, you need to submit a form on religion by the UNCC census date, which this year is September 18th. To foster an environment of tolerance and civility in this class and across the college, you are asked to be courteous and respectful of others, regardless of race, ethnicity, national origin, gender identity, and expression, sexual orientation, religion, age, and ability. Be the best you you can be, and I hope that the best you is tolerant of people who are not like you. Please make sure you have read the syllabus. If you cannot find the information you need and believe the only way forward is to email me, please make sure your correspondence has your full name and your section number. All right, this is the end. So it's been really nice meeting you virtually. Um, and I hope you have a great semester. Make sure you do read the syllabus in its long form 
uh, before you prepare to take the syllabus quiz.